Welcome everyone to another uh, video in this um, Modbus video series. Um, this time we're gonna uh, see how we can integrate Modbus TCP into uh, our uh, Ellen Bradley uh, PLC, such as Control Logics or uh, Compact Logics. Um, so in in my case here, and for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using uh, MD Bus as uh, my Modbus TCP slave, which we're going to see here in a moment how all that is set. Um, but generally speaking, there's lots of devices uh, out there that communicate Modbus TCP that uh, we will typically um, be faced with to integrate into our control systems such as uh, VFDs, uh, flow meters, RTUs, uh, power monitors, and so forth. Uh, so without any uh, further delays, uh, let's see how we can uh, achieve that. So as I mentioned uh, earlier, I'm using uh, MDBus as my uh, Modbus uh, TCP slave. So as you can uh, see here, I have my uh, protocol in here is set to RTUTCP um, using port 542 and for the uh, coils and registers I want to interact with I just set this to 80 coils, 80 statuses, 50 registers and 50 holding uh, 50 input registers and 50 holding registers so we're gonna uh, click OK so that's just the basic basic configuration I'm going to click OK on that and then we're going to turn this on so our slave can be uh, ready for uh, communication. And I'm going to minimize that. And next we're going to have a look at the PLC. So uh, we have here essentially three rungs. Uh, first one just to help us resume communication in case of some errors and so forth. And then in this couple of rungs, uh, we have these two add on instructions uh, that will allow us to communicate Modbus TCP from uh, our Ellen Bradley PLC. Uh, the first one here is for the wind reads, uh, so functions like function one, two, three, and four. And then the second one will allow us to do uh, writes, uh, functions like five, six, 15 and uh, 16. So we're going to interact with the first one here, the read, and then uh, then we're going to see how the writes uh, work. So just to touch up on a couple things here, uh, setting wise. So as you can see here, this is the IP address uh, I'm using uh, for my uh, Modbus slave and then the port 502. And then uh, as far as the commands, uh, we can have up to 60 commands. But right now I'm just uh, configuring four commands. That's what you can see here of the enabled uh, commands. So the first command uh, we're using here, we're just trying to read uh, the 80 coils. So that's function uh, one. And uh, I have the poll interval here set to have a second. Uh, and then I have the memory offset. So this memory offset is correspond to the uh, uh, read uh, array which is 120 uh, registers so that's where the data that we're reading from our slave is going to go to uh, in our PLC and then I'm just starting from zero so that's the first element in that uh, array and then uh, next uh, I can put a description and so forth and if there is an error this will turn on next command is function number two so again i have the command is enabled my slave is one and then i'm trying to read 80 uh, registers those 80 statuses and if uh, you would notice here we're starting from element five in that uh, 120 uh, registers array the reason for that is because uh, in here we have 80 coils so these 80 co coils they are going to occupy uh, five registers uh, because each register has 16 bits so uh, that's why 
the first 80 will occupy the, the first 5, so that's 0 to 4. And therefore, we're going to be starting here from uh, 5. And then in the same way, this command uh, is going to occupy also 5 registers because we're trying to read uh, 80 uh, input statuses. So it's going to occupy another 5 registers. So that's mean the next command, we're going to be starting from 10, as you can see here. So we're not uh, overlapping data over each other. Uh, but in this command here, this is command number 4. So I'm trying to read the 50 input registers uh, that we saw uh, earlier set up in the MD bus. And I'm trying to put the result of that read starting from uh, element 10 in that uh, read array. And then the last command here is reading the holding registers, which is function 3. And I'm going to try to read 50 registers. And because I'm reading 50 earlier, so that's mean my start point for the next command is going to be 60. So then that's where I'm going to start from and uh, to put my next 50 registers. So that's as far as the settings. Uh, so without any further delays, uh, we're going to trigger this and, and we're going to see how all that works. So click OK here. <clears throat> I'm going to trigger um, my command and uh, we can see here that we are uh, connected and then it's just uh, gonna go through its own sequence to clear and as we can see here uh, we are active and we are reading so to confirm that uh, everything is working as expected I'm just gonna put this aside here and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring my uh, coils so that's my 80 coils. Just gonna move this a little bit here. So let's put this all the way down. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to my my array in here. Okay, there we go. So if I look here in my first four registers, these four registers, that is going to correspond to these 80 coils. So let's look at the first register here. So as we can see here, we have 0, 1, and then everything is 0. And that's exactly what we have here, 0, 1, and then all the way 0 until you see here until 16. So that's our first register. Now if we go here, double click on this and hit 1, uh, except in here, we will see that our uh, first register, which is uh, number one, as you can see here, it's updated to one. And then in the same way, if we go now to the last, for example, uh, bit on the last register, which is bit 15 on uh, this element number four, so that's going to correspond to our last uh, coil in here. So right now, we can see it is 0 in here, and it is also 0 in here. But if I go and update it to 1, so right now I just wrote 1 here in the MD bus, and you can see it's already updated here to 1 as well. So that's how uh, easy it is to basically read our coils. So next, as we said, the next command is going to start from 5, and that's reading our uh, input statuses. Now, if we close this and then go to our status and bring that again here. So in the same way, put this a little bit down. <clears throat> and then we can see here, so our first register is, is 1101. If we look here, you see there is 110100 and so forth. Now, in the same way, if I double click on this and put this to 0, we will see here this is changed to 0 right right there. Now in the same way if I go to the last register which is 9 and then bit 15 which will correspond to status input status uh, uh, 80 so you can see it's already one here and it's already one here. Now if I double click on it and put this to 0 you'll see that's 0 here and then it's going to update here uh, in a moment to become also uh, 0. So that's Essentially, as you can see here, it's zero. That's how uh, simple it is to read our uh, input statuses. Now, in the same way, we are going to 
have our next uh, command which is reading our 50 registers our, our 50 input registers this one's here so I'm gonna bring them up here as well and I'm gonna go uh, all the way here so we can see everything so now we can see here is 100, 100, 200 and so forth so everything is corresponding to that so now if I double click on the first one and I say um, maybe I want a thousand I hit accept and then you will see it, it change here on the MD bus and now it changed here on the PLC side as well so here's 1000 in the same way if I go to the uh, last uh, value or the last um, element which is 59 you can see here it's 1000 and here it's 1000 so if I double click on it and I say I want uh, maybe 1001 hit accept so we have here 1001 and it's going to update here uh, right there right now to 1001 so that's basically reading your uh, your holding registers just as simple as that now the last one here is holding registers so in the same way I'm gonna expand this a bit and see it so now if we go and start from 60 where we put our first holding register so we can see here 10 20 30 and so forth which is the same values as we have here now if we double click on this and put a value of um, maybe 1020 something like that so I put 1020 in MD bus and it's gonna basically update this here uh, in a moment there we go 1020 and then in the same way I can uh, look at the last uh, basically element here in in this one so that's one 109 so I can see here I'm reading already 100 if I double click on it um, and put something like maybe 10,000 it's accept so it is 10,000 here in the last register and then we'll see here this will update uh, in a moment to 10,000 as well as we can see right now so that was as simple as that to read uh, all our uh, data from our Modbus uh, slave now with the same uh, method we're gonna see how the writes uh, work so I'm just going to close this and close that, minimize that for a sec. Let's close this and let's go back to our uh, logic in here. Now in the same way we are going to see how the write uh, works. So a couple things we can touch up on here. Similarly to how we looked at the read uh, add instruction. So we have here the setup of our uh, IP address for the Modbus uh, slave. And then the port and then in the same way we have up to 60 commands right now we set up uh, four commands similarly to the um, to the read so we can do uh, function command uh, 5 6 15 and 16 so the first one is going to be 5 which is basically we just want to write to a coil so the uh, coil is going to be essentially the uh, the one we're going to write to is the first coil that we have in that uh, 80 coils we saw earlier and then uh, the next command is going to be a uh, function command 6 so that's uh, for 6 we just want to write to a single register now the address we specify here is 49 and this is uh, offset by 1 so uh, it's going to be basically address number 50 in our list and in here uh, you will notice that we're starting from one the reason for that because we already used the first register for this coil to to read uh, to write from it sorry so now this one we're going to start from uh, one and then the next uh, command is function code 15 so we're just going to write to multiple uh, coils so in here we specify 32 uh, coils and the address here is one uh, now remember this is uh, we're already writing to zero so we don't uh, overlap uh, on the same uh, coil we start in here from uh, uh, from uh, one which is uh, will be register number two and uh, in here we're starting from uh, register uh, two because we already used uh, one in here 
and then the following command is going to be writing to uh, holding or multiple holding registers so in this command we're starting from a zero and we're writing to 20 the first 20 registers uh, of our 50 registers we have there and then we're starting from uh, number three in our right uh, array so those are the commands we are trying to execute so with no further delays let's uh, turn on our trigger and see how that's gonna work for us so i'm gonna click ok and turn this on so it's gonna go through its uh, sequence in here try to clear and then it's gonna try to connect and there we go so we're connected and we're active and communicating so now that that's all good uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to our array in here for our rights. I'm going to put this aside and then we're going to bring our coils. Which what we have over here. Now you will see here uh, the first coil here is uh, zero. And hit zero here so if i hit one you'll see immediately there is one in there if i hit zero there is zero right there so just as simple as that now the following command that we did is we just want to write to a single register now if you recall that was register number 50. so if i go here to our holding registers because we specified the address we specify was 49 so I'm just going to put this here uh, beside this guy here. So you can see here it's 100. If I go here and say maybe 1001, and you will see here right there 1001. So it's just as simple as that. So next command is we want to write to uh, multiple uh, coils. So that's going to be basically starting from here from uh, 2. And uh, for that, you can see here, if we start from here, so we've got 1, 0, 0, 0, and so forth, uh, which corresponds to this second one right here. Now, if I go here and write 0, we will see that this one is also 0 now. If I go and write 1, maybe 1, another 1, you can see it's right in one and there we go one 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 so it's just uh, as simple as that now in the same way we're going to be writing to uh, our holding registers um, starting from here from three as you can see here is 10 20 30 and so forth so i can go here and say maybe 1000 2000 and you can see there's already 1000 there 2000 there's 3000 and so forth so um can be all the way here and in the same way for example we can uh, write here in the last one 150 for example and that's going to be 120 in register 20 right there so here's about 150. so um it was as uh, simple as as that so essentially what we're doing right now is um we're doing uh, all the read functions and all the right functions simultaneously uh, from our Alan Bradley PLC uh, directly without uh, the need of any uh, uh, extra device or third-party device and so forth. So it's just as simple uh, as that. The other thing also we can keep in mind is if we need to talk to uh, multiple devices, we can simply just um, basically duplicate this uh, add instructions to talk to uh, uh, other uh, other uh, Modbus uh, uh, slaves. So that's it for me, uh, folks. Um, if you enjoy the content of this video, please uh, subscribe, uh, like, comment. Uh, they're all uh, appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one.